for the longest time in Formula One, Ferrari was undefeated because they were the first to have one of these. On the screen is a sensing and actuating center. And what a sensing and actuating center does is collects billions of data points in real time during the race. It collects these billions of data points and it analyzes them because every team thinks they have the winning strategy, the best car, the best turnaround in their pit crews, but then reality punches them in the face. And on race day, it's too cold or it's too hot or it's raining. Something happens, an oil spill takes place, an accident takes place. Something happens and they need to adjust their race strategy in real time. And it turns out that by whispering in the driver's ear and saying, you know what, you can skip the pit. You can go harder on the brakes. It's that difference that makes the difference. And our question to everybody is, what does your organizational sensing and actuating center look like? Most businesses use one thing, and that's process to manage their risk. And as a result, everything is built to the lowest common denominator. Everything is built to the lowest common denominator. At, uh, at, at a Dakota company, what we do is we understand the individual and we understand their individual experience. And so we recognize that this is the first time somebody's doing this. All that process and bureaucracy makes a lot of sense. In fact, we might suggest more. Because it's your first time, it's a teachable moment. It's a time when you're going to get the practice and feedback that you need to truly learn. So because of that, we can give you a buddy which can coach you through the process. Because of that, we can give you a training intervention at a time where you're going to get the practice and feedback that you need to truly perform. But with every single time that you demonstrate competence, we can relax the process and we can make things easier for you. And so that's really technology acting as a coach. And we're seeing it across a whole bunch of organizations. In our book, we have an alphabet of examples from Amazon to Zappos and pretty much every letter in between. Google is a great one. And you're going to hear Rahaf talk a little bit about Project Oxygen, which is part of their people analytics department. Now, notice people not resources, and their people analytics department is really trying to turn every manager into their best manager. But they're doing so much more. At Google EDU, they're trying to figure out precisely when a person is going to be receptive to a training intervention. And over the next two years, they're going to be experimenting with how to adapt the learning style to that individual. And so there you have it, really. What you have is predictive algorithms that understand the individual and therefore can dial process up or down, depending on their experience, and then provide training interventions only precisely at a teachable moment, at a time where the individual is going to get the practice and feedback that they need to truly perform. And by doing that, you reduce bureaucracy and you increase speed, all by rejecting the notion that people are interchangeable resources.